Um, so the goalpost, the question, the question being about uh, what, a, what a, res a reasonable renewal energy strategy for the city of Seattle should look like um, in the next five to ten years. The goalposts on this question have definitely moved. The city of Seattle currently has a climate plan that, that spoke um, in very optimistic terms about being able to kick the can on this question down the road to 2040, 2045, 2050. And of course, it's clear that we don't have that much time if we did at any, at any juncture. Um, and so I think that um, in addition to sort of the things that I spoke about earlier and talking about how density has real um, links to the climate question, the, the question of climate justice, I think housing first is really one of our best ways to reduce the city's carbon impact generally, carbon footprint generally. I think that um, to answer the question literally, a reasonable renewable energy goal for this, the city of Seattle in the next five to 10 years. First, we want to look at ending our relationship with Puget Sound Energy, which is one of the biggest polluters in the um, region. Um, looking at establishing a municipal, a municipal bank that the city currently actually has, um, you know, sort of wrapped up in a feasibility study at this point. Um, and that would sort of enable us to disinvest from um, companies like um, Wells Fargo and other, continue to disinvest from companies like Wells Fargo and others that have been known to be uh, not friends of the climate. I think um, with respect to renewable energy, we also want to look at um, a subsidy program that would make it so that um, homeowners, for example, that are thinking of getting um, certain kinds of installations for heating in their homes that um, are more likely to have a very um, negative carbon or very um, pronounced carbon impact are given subsidies to go a different direction. We want to make sure that in new housing developments that go up, that most of those have um, some kind of charging station for electric cars to incentivize people to move in that direction. Um, one idea that I think we'd want to look at is having a sort of like a cash for clunkers um, project or program where um, the city essentially buys back, um, you know, a certain amount of um, cars that are running on fossil fuels and give subsidies to people if they have to be in their automobiles um, to buy electric cars. Um, and more than anything, I think increasing the amount of um, progressive revenue that we have to bring certain transit projects across the finish line. Um, currently, there are about a half a dozen um, projects, transit projects across the city that are stalled for lack of funding, um, including one in my own uh, neighborhood of Eastlake. Um, and so that, you know, the, the question of making Seattle a more green city um, and divorcing us both, both privately and publicly from um, destructive sources of energy is once again, I think, tied pretty intimately to the question of how it is that we're going to raise the progressive revenue um, to do this. Um, one uh, tax that um, I sort of identified in the course of sort of looking over um, soft spots in the city's tax code right now is that golf courses are actually taxed at a rate that's infinitesimally smaller than the rate that working people have to pay on their single family homes. Um, and that just doesn't seem very fair to me. There's a 55 acre golf course, privately owned golf course in District 4, the Sandpoint Country Club. Um, that is taxed at not only, not pennies on the dollar, but pennies on the pennies on the pennies of the dollar um, of the property tax rates that you see in surrounding neighborhoods. And that just can't be something that we do as a progressive city anymore. So building the political will, I think, to raise um, raise taxes for, um, you know, certain green projects around the city is something that we need 